All right, folks, James here with you. As you know, we're talking about story that matters. And now we're going to go to uh, Dubai. We're going to go there to talk with an uh, uh, American doctor, Dr. Larry Davis. Doctor, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, James. Great to be here. And where exactly are you? I said Dubai. Is that correct or Abu Dhabi? Uh, I'm in Abu Dhabi, which is about an hour and a half from Dubai. So it's not so bad. It, it's very close, and I visit there a lot. An American doctor in Abu Dhabi, what are you doing there? Uh, actually, I am working at a college here called Higher Colleges of Technology. And I'm basically a teacher trainer. So I tend to travel actually around UAE a lot, not just Dubai and Abu Dhabi. There are seven Emirates. So I, I travel to a few of the Emirates. And one of the experiences that really struck your attention right away is over there, female students are not allowed to show their faces even inside of a classroom, right? In this version of Islam, the women are not allowed to be even to get their pictures taken without permission. And especially going into a classroom to take pictures is something that really can't be done. Wow, wow. Let's talk about that ATM goal that I'm looking at right now. So basically, it's like going and, and using an ATM here in the United States, getting money, but here you're getting gold. Well, I had um, been with a friend of mine who asked me to take care of her son, and we went to a place called the Emirates Palace Hotel. She was uh -huh. doing a sporting event there, and after we finished, we walked through the hotel, and you've heard of five-star hotels, but this is more like a 50-star hotel. And we walked into one of the corridors and there was a gold vending machine. So walked up to it and saw that you can put in a credit card and buy gold bars or gold jewelry and most gold things. So I was, uh, of course, I had to get my picture taken with that because I haven't seen that before. But since I took that picture, I heard that there are about three or, f three or four of these machines around the country and they tend to be in these top rated hotels. Fascinating. Larry, we have to talk about the, that, these pictures of the mask. Wonderful pictures. And inside you have gold as well. Yeah, this is the Sheikh Zayed Mosque, which was finished in, I believe, the year 2007. Mm -hmm. And it's in Abu Dhabi, so I actually drive by it every day on my way to work, so I get to look at the mosque. It's huge. It's, the pictures don't really do justice on the size of it. And as you can see with the gold pillars there, uh, I actually had a friend from out of town and we walked by and sure enough, it's something like gold leaf. And I can't even tell you how many pillars there are. There's probably about 150 to 200 pillars around the mosque that have that kind of gold leaf. So they've spent a little bit of money uh, on the extravagance. And those are ivory, uh, not ivory, sorry, marble pillars inlaid with colored stones. I'm not sure what type of stones, but it's quite the construction. It's really beautiful and really amazing and definitely worth the visit for those who come to Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Talking about driving, uh, and I'm looking at that main road right now. It, it wasn't the way, the way it is right now. In 1990, it used to be totally different. And tell me more about the story uh, behind that wonderful monument. Well, hopefully you'll find uh, some pictures of Dubai back in the early 1990s. And the Sheikh, who he's still the Sheikh now, Sheikh Mohammed of Dubai, had a lot of vision and realized that the oil money, which was, you know, financing a lot of the country, is a finite resource and decided to build a city based on tourism and commerce. So that big road that you see is the Sheikh Zayed Road, which runs right through the middle of Dubai. And it's actually the main road to Abu Dhabi too. So I've been on that road a lot. And in 1990, they started a building boom and they started with basically desert and all along Sheikh Zayed now, it's, it's called the Manhattan of uh, the U Manhattan of the Middle East because it's just full of tall buildings all up and down Sheikh Zayed Road, probably for about 30, 30 to 40 miles worth of tall buildings. Let's take our viewers to the uh, Dancing Fountain. Tell me about that. I know that's one of your favorites. Um, I, I hope that you'll put up a shot of the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world, because right next to the Burj Khalifa, they've built 
the Dubai Mall, which is the largest mall in the world, I understand. And then right next to the mall, they've built this artificial lake, which reminds me a lot of Disney World in uh, Florida, mm -hmm. in Orlando. I should Florida. Yeah. Uh, and basically, they have built this fountain inside of the lake. And every 30 minutes or so, some music comes on. It's kind of Middle Eastern music. It has that mood. But the water in the fountain then dances to the music. And it goes in, in sync with the music. So it's really kind of beautiful. And it's especially good at night. Uh, a lot of tourists come there at night and they watch the fountain. And again, that show happens about every half an hour. It goes on for between five to ten minutes. And it's really great if you have a camera come and you take pictures. It's really nice to see. Dr. Larry Davis, we're running out of time. But tell me, what do you want uh, a U.S. citizen right now, uh, you know, if someone making plan to go visit either Dubai or Abu Dhabi, what is it that person needs to have in mind? Uh, everybody speaks English here, so you don't need to worry about that. That's in a cool your, one. <laughs> your passport, you don't need a visa. Uh, the airports are first cl world-class airports, and the airlines that support the Emirates are there. There is a lot to do here. If you're planning a three to five day trip, that's plenty to do. You can go to the desert. You can go out on the water fishing. You can ski if you want. There's a big indoor ski uh, area in um, a mall called Mall of the Emirates. Uh, and they have just about everything here. They have good dining, nice hotels, nice sightseeing, good shopping, excursions out into the desert, which are nice. So it's, an, it's a nice a change of pace for people who who are ready to fly uh, 15 to 16 hours to get here from Florida. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Larry Davis, for being here with us. All right. It's been a pleasure, James. And thank you to you as well for watching. Like we said, we're going to bring you some stories that you don't see regularly on TV, but things that you need to know, things that are happening around the world. So stay tuned for much more.